look at products coming into Nigeria and they also look at products that are going in. So right now we're about to uh, start and I'd ask engineer Fatima Akemi Dolu to read the profile of Mrs. Regina Madaki Garba. Good day all. Hello? Yeah, go on, we can hear you. We can hear you. We can Good hear you. All. Hello? I'm here honored to give a brief profile regarding Mrs. Regina Kubwat Madaki, who happens to be one of the pre presenters of uh, today's program. Mrs. Regina Kubwat Madaki Garba is firstborn of the Madaki's family, which makes her the older twin of our twin presenters of today's program. She has worked in Navdak, Lagos for two decades and has experience working across the 36 states of Nigeria. She is presently head of Pharmacovigilance Post Marketing Surveillance, Lagos, Lagos State Branch, where she is responsible for overseeing post registration of regulated products. Mrs. Regina Madaki Garba holds a B.Tech in Industrial Chemistry, M.Sc. in Analytical Chemistry, and is working towards a PhD in environmental chemistry. She has undergone several professional trainings in Nigeria and in other parts of the world, including the United States of America, France, Canada, United Kingdom, and Morocco, which covered those organized by WHO, FAO, USDA, USP, UNIDO. Mrs. Garba is the season inspector of foreign facilities for good manufacturing practice, GMP, and presently a deputy director, PVPMS Lagos. She is married to engineer, engineer John Garba and is a mother of three boys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Engineer Akinro Dolu. And since our event today is unique, I'm sure it's never happened in the NSC before having twin presented. I'm going to now call on the elder of the twins, Mrs. Regina Madaki Garba for her presentation. Mrs. Madaki, I'll alert you when it's seven minutes, when you have seven minutes more to go. Thank you. So please let's have her presentation. So would you like me to share it? Because I actually have it. I can share it if necessary. So please just tell me when you want me to move to the next slide. Okay. Do I have the floor? Yes, you do. Please go ahead. Okay. Good morning, um, my fellow engineers. I'm not impersonating. I am engineer by association, like I said. Uh, my, my husband is an engineer, so it's not a crime if I associate myself with this extreme um, group. Now, um, I was just giving 20 minutes. I'm really going to uh, read very fast. And if you have any question, you can ask after the presentation. And this presentation encompasses everything that have to do with registration guidelines. So even if I'm unable to um, emphasize on many, you will be able to get the slide and study it on your own. The first outline is introduction guidelines to register local food, cosmetics, herbal, 
then imported food, cosmetics, herbal remedies, then global listing for supermarket, then exportation of finished products, then um, types of certificates. When you want to register, the type of certificate you'll be expecting from NAFDAQ. Then I came up with a little uh, case study. This case study will highlight why some of our products are rejected and reasons. So if I'm unable to cover, you'll be able to use the slide afterward. Move to the next slide, please. Uh, please, could you switch on your video? Because we want everybody to see that you're real twins. So we want your camera on, please, so that they can believe us. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, you know, I'm a shy person. Yeah, uh, we know. <laughs> okay, um, uh, the introduction speaks about NAFDAQ and the federal government law. And you can see the logo, the federal government and the law. Now that was established by these laws. I won't go into that. But what I want to capture here is the mission of NAFDAQ is to regulate and control the importation, exportation, manufacture, distribution, sale and use of food, drugs, cosmetics, medical devices. I didn't highlight other products because for the case, for the purpose of this meeting, these are the keywords that I know that most of us are interested. And now that is mandated, mandated to safeguard the health of the nation by ensuring only the right foods, drugs, medical devices, are manufactured, imported, exported, distributed. So it is the mandate of NAFDA, then it is necessary to emphasize that no food, cosmetics, drugs, or any regulated product should be manufactured, imported, sold, distributed in Nigeria, unless it is it has been registered. So meaning that before you send anything in the market or for consumption, you must comply to this law. It's federal government law. Next slide. Locally manufactured food, these are the requirements I highlighted. Now, this guideline is just a summary of what you need to have. The first thing that you need to have as an aspiring manufacturer is to register a business. Now, now that has brought it very, uh, they simplify it by capture, you can register business name, it to be acceptable. Normally, most people that are interested in this kind of locally manufactured, they start with micro. We have micro, we have medium, we have um, uh, large. So whichever category we want to fall in, you must have a registered certificate. Then the next and very important is your trademark. You need a trademark, you need your label. Before you come up with any idea at all, you must have a name of a product you want to register or you want to sell or you want to be identified with in the market. So that way, once you come up with a name, you go and register. And that is why today you won't see anybody taking somebody's name. A product. can't hear you, Regina. If you can hear you, the screen is frozen. For instance, you... Go on, please. Yes, we can hear you now. Go on. Frozen again. Hello? Yes, please go on. We can hear you now. Okay. Now, uh, the next uh, in all local manufacturing is a certificate of analysis. Now, certificate of analysis is very key. I'm considering this document as very, very important because if you are producing soap, for instance, dudu osu, and your dudu osu, you are telling us that the, it, it, is, it is whitening. Why do you know that the ingredients you are using in dudu osu is whitening? Have you carried out any analysis? So you need to take um, get in touch with the public analyst. Let them analyze the excipients of, of ingredients of your product. And then know some of the ingredients you are using. Either some of them are toxic, either some of them are not even important for your formulation. You must know so that analytic, analytical certificate will be able to come up with all the components of what you are formulating to sell to the public. That way, you, it will serve you as a guide. Then you apply for, um, you write a formal application later to NAVDAC. And then most importantly, again, we also want for food product, we are very curious about food handlers test. The people who are intend to work in your factory, 
they must not have tuberculosis. Some of them, we don't discriminate because we are HIV positive or hepatitis positive, so you will not work in a factory. No, it will give us a guide to know, okay, this is the designation office or activity we need to give this person to handle. You know, if somebody is TB positive and is working in a food industry, you know, tuberculosis virus can stay in a room for about three days. And you know what it is? to all other workers working in the same facility. We are not discriminating, but we want to know so that we know the appropriate designation to give such officers. So these are the, the most importantly, again, in this document is your SOP. SOP is very key. Nobody will get this SOP for you. You are the producer of the product. You know what the product is all about. You are the one that will sit down and write the SOP of your production, SOP of how you source for your raw material, SOP of cleaning after production, SOP of consumer complaint, how you handle consumer complaint. Somebody buy your product and begin to complain. How do you handle his case? SOP for recall, if all those products are contaminated in the market, how do you recall them? These are all, nobody will do that. You will be the one that will do that for you, for yourself. Next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, the next, no. Are you fine? No, you, you have to... jumped. Uh, you said I should. Uh... No, you have jumped one. Go back. Uh, this is, you said I should go on. Yeah. This okay. is where we were. This is where we were. Yeah. No, um, um, yes, this is, this is, cos no, this is food. The next one is cosmetics. Okay. Cosmetics have similar guidelines, but what happened here in cosmetics and herbal, you know, there are people who go into herbal production. Now, in herbal, you can attest, sometimes you add some claims that have some therapeutic uses in such herbal products, especially in cosmetics. Now, we insist because now there is um, uh, an association of traditional uh, medicine uh, council that has been established by NAVDA. You must get a clearance from them because we want to know what you are really claim, claiming. There are some claims that you cannot substantiate. But when you come with that certificate, we know that they must have asked you certain questions and you must have given a lot of proof. And they are satisfied with those proofs before they will give you those certificates. So one of the documents that is very important in uh, locally manufactured cosmetics, especially the harbor, is certificate of harbor practitioner issued by traditional council have remedies. The other guidelines are the same with food. Next slide, please. Now, imported food, I said documents abroad. There are documents that are required from manufacturers abroad where you intend to import, and then there are documents we require in Nigeria on the same purpose. Now, one of Three documents are very, very important in importation. Uh, notarized power. Skin is frozen again. Maybe it's because of the video. Regina, please, can you switch off your camera now? Maybe, I think we may be interfering with the bandwidth. We can't hear very well. Regina, we can't hear well. Can you turn off your camera? Maybe it'll help. Now, um, notarized power of attorney uh, must be not notarized by a notary public, meaning that this document will be legalized. At any time anything goes wrong, you can sue NAVDA. NAVDA can sue you. NAVDA can sue the importer. NAVDA can sue the manufacturer. So it's a legal document. And we normally don't accept anybody below the rank of MD, chief executive, chairman, or president of that organization to sign because they know the implication. The next one is, um, you might choose to use power of attorney, but if you have gone into some agreement, probably you want the company abroad to be manufacturing a brand for you, then you don't need power of attorney. You will require memorandum of understanding or agreement later. In that document, two of you, two of the parties will sign. And normally we always advise that if you are signing this kind of document, there must be a proper agreement and everything should be spelled. Because when business goes sour and you are revoking the power of attorney, if those items or those situations, scenarios are not spelled on that document, it will, you will be the loser. Because 
what these people abroad does is immediately they, 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 you, they you are producing for you or the agreement is not clearly defined and your product is doing very well in the market. They will wake up one night and revoke the power of attorney. And when they revoke it, we cannot process for you. We will follow what the law says. The next document on this is combined certificate of manufacture and free sale. Because we are not everywhere, this document is issued by a regulate, responsible regulatory body, just a body like NAFTAG in the country of manufacture. For instance, you are bringing in product from US. Ministry of Agriculture are responsible for the issuing this document, meaning that they are confirming the existence of this uh, company in US. And whatever thing you intend to sell in Nigeria is confirmed by Nigerian embassy that yes, they are producing this product in US, they are consuming this product in US, and they want to sell this product to us in Nigeria. That way, that's the only way we can accept. But if you are only producing for Nigerian government alone, that means you are producing for export alone. It's not allowed. Whatever you want to sell to us, you must make sure you are consuming it, you are distributing it in the country of manufacture. Then the next one is comprehensive certificate of analysis. Whatever thing about your product, all these ones are not your responsibility, you the importer here. This document will be prepared to you for you by your manufacturer. So certificate of analysis, they already have it. So they will give you all the in certificate of analysis. It gives us a guide on the composition of these products you are about to sell. By the time we are carrying out analysis, we check the parameters of this product. If we find contrary, the product won't be accepted. Next slide. You have seven minutes more. Oh, Ooh. okay. So um, I think there were some interference from your side. So I don't think you should count that. Um, imported, uh, okay, documents from um, the one you will get from Nigeria. Certificate of Business Incorporation, evidence of trademark, notarized declaration, letter of invitation. We must visit the country of manufacture where you intend to sell this product. We must go. So you will give us letter of invitation, then formal letter, and then you will come with the artwork. We must see what you have, what you intend to sell. Next slide, please. No. Is that right? That's right. Okay, imported cosmetics, they have the same guidelines with the imported food. It's the same thing. Next slide. Okay, imported cosmetics is the same guidelines. Since I have a few minutes, what I want to emphasize is global listing. There are so many people who want to go into small supermarkets. Now, supermarket is not strenuous at all if you have the facilities. The facility we, now that don't ask so much uh, on, in terms of documentation, you're from CO. Can't hear you, Regina. That, that must be the network. Let your Regina. outbreak. Next slide. Exportation. A lot of people who produce want to export. There are so many issues with exportation based on the way we manufacture here, we package. Problem of manufacturing is, uh, sorry, exportation is lack of knowledge on what to do. First and foremost, you need to register with Nigerian Promotion Council and get their certificate. That way you are declaring your intention. Then Nigeria ex uh, uh, NXP, you get that uh, certificate from bank. Now, this NXP is very important. What we always use this one is, by the time you export, there is some proceeds that the federal government gives for successful exporters. So by the time you export, you bring back your bill of lading and all your shipping document that you have successfully exported to the bank. There is a proceed given to exporters in Nigeria for now. So a lot of people don't take advantage of this, and we don't have people who export. 
And now it is being encouraged by the federal government that we should go into local manufacturing and bring up beautiful packaging for export. A lot of export pro our products are very good for export, but we don't know how to go about it. So by making inquiries from NAVDAC, from NES, uh, NEPC, you'll be good to go. There is no formality, no restriction, no strictness. It's very, very free. Next slide. Type of certificate. It all depends on what you want. If you, want, if you don't even want, if you are exporting a busi, for instance, and you don't want to go into process, you are uh, exporting it in bulk, you don't need certificate. You only, there is a certificate we issue, health certificate. So we have different categories of certificate that you want. Whichever one you want, NAFTA will give you. We don't compel you to say, this is the one you must get. If you have a customer in America who says, please send us Obono in bags, you don't have to repackage it. Then we'll give, we know the certificate to give you. If you have customer who say, please process it and package it into small, smaller parts for us to sell, they have different certificate or whatever thing is made easier. And like I said, every process is now electronic. Mrs. Uh, Engineer Kadri can testify to that. Next slide, please. <laughs> you have two more minutes, Regina. Okay, okay, I won't go into case study. I wanted to bring up this issue of uh, handling of food items, both food cosmetics. Most of the issues we have on product registration, product for distribution is temperature, how we handle, where we keep our raw materials. These are the things that are imbued into the contamination of the product if we don't take care of. So because we have short time, I'll leave this case study. The slide will be given to your committee. You can go through it. My telephone number is there. My email is there. I will appreciate if you want to communicate with me, you can use my WhatsApp. It's easier. Sometimes my phone can be busy. You can use my email. Send me all questions, all direct uh, uh, concerns. I am very much available to respond to all your concerns. And I'm here, like uh, Engineer Fumi said, anything you want from NAVDAC, I am on ground for you. Thank you very much for listening and God bless you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Miss, I was about, yeah, yeah, I can call you engineeress. That's what we call. I hope you've been attending our conferences along with your husband. I so that's always, that's always, <laughs> please, <laughs> please do, please do. Um, I'm trying to get up um, Rosie's profile. I hope I'm going to be able to get that because you just give me a second to get Rosie's profile. Up. I'm about to introduce engineer Rose Madak. Okay, great. Thank you very much for that. Um. Can you scroll, scroll up so that I can see? Engineer Rose Madaki, fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, is the second born of the Madaki family, which makes her the younger twin of her twin presenters of today. She has worked with Standards Organization of Nigeria for decades and is presently the SUN State Coordinator in Oweri, in Imo State. A seasoned engineer whose degrees are in Bachelor of Technology, Agricultural Engineering, Farm, Power and Machine Design, Masters of Business Administration, Masters in Production, Masters in Metallurgical Engineering. Engineer Rose Madaki became the first female chairman of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Victoria Island branch, the branch that makes a difference. She's the first female chairman of the NSC Lagos Zone, which has five branches, and she's the first female chairman of all NSE chairmen with over 78 branches in Nigeria. Engineer Rose Madaki is also a member of the Women in Engineering Committee of the Federation of African Engineering Organizations and WFEO. She's also a lead auditor in the ISA 9001 2015 Quality Management System, a lead auditor in ISO 14001 2015 environmental management system. She's an auditor in ISO 18001 2015 occupational health and safety management system. And she's an assessor in the ISO 17025 laboratory accreditation. Please join me as I welcome engineer Rose Madaki for her presentation, which I'll now put up.
Um, can you? Can I unmute? Uh, can I? Yes, please. See? Yeah. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay. And I'll tell you when um, you have seven minutes to go. Okay, ma. Thank you. Um, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, this one is uh, just a minute out of my time. A point of correction. The president of APWEM, Engineer Fun Lola Ojelade, she's a very close friend to my twin sister, and that is why she always gives her the first position. But as a matter of fact, I will still always correct this, that I am the firstborn. I am kind, so I cannot say my bad rights. I'm still the senior. And Apwen has to apologize to me for making her to make the presentation first. I'm supposed to make the presentation first. So you have to correct that. And the president has to take note for subsequent events. And secondly, so you are going you say we should ask him. Your bad tradition. It's not your bad tradition. And then secondly, she said we should ask her anything. She doesn't have any right because she has answered the name of engineer today. So she must always listen to us anytime we come to her. Thank you very much. Uh, I just had to make that correction. So going back to my presentation, uh, Remy, please roll down this, my, uh, I don't know who is controlling it over there because of network. I don't know whether it's in the United States. Um, let us roll down, we'll start in the introduction, order yes. a table of contents, okay. and uh, just brief about the terminologies because in the, in the documents, I use a lot of terminologies, which some of you will not be aware of. So I try to define a few of them that were presented in this document. So we can use it after this presentation. So let's go into the introduction of uh, activities of standard organization. So since I have only very few minutes, I just uh, have to highlight certain few things for us to understand the processes of standards uh, and activities of standard organization. Who is saddled with the responsibility of setting standards on all products? All products, anything aside from product that NAVDA regulates. I will now go into the product that NAVDA regulates that SON don't regulate. All these standards must be established. And most of the standards, again, that NAVDA regulates, like food, will write standards on food. And as NAVDA brings in their own input, their own regulation, which is embedded in the standards. Then this standard is harmonized, agreed upon, and then sent out for enforcement. And these are some of the documents that NAVDA used to enforce when they are carrying out their activities. Um, for standard and organization- Can you just stop a moment? Because I don't know what's going on. I think it's gone into um, automatic uh, presentations. I want to start it again so that I, we get you exactly where you are. Okay. I don't know. Why I say we well, you should go to um, uh, um, slide seven. That's introduction. Slide. Seven. All other ones are just, um, but you should know it's not part of my time. Okay. I don't know. I think it's, I think you've already programmed how you want it to be presented into the slide because it's not, am I there yet? Or do I still go backwards? It's just going into yes. the automatic. You know, uh, like no, you're not there. It's, it's, it's like it's seven. before this, before this. Okay, yeah, it's before that, yeah. You see introduction. Okay. Uh -huh, that's there we are. Yeah. Yes. But what is going so, on now? Yes. So um, I will just scroll down and pick up uh, things that uh, would be very important for this uh, okay, discussion. Good. Now, for standard organization, you wonder how do we elaborate standards? I will request that some other day will fix that. I will tell you how standards are being elaborated by standard organization. But if you are important for the purpose of this presentation, we are talking about imported and locally manufactured goods, which will benefit every intended manufacturer. Sorry, I need, I need to stop it. I'm sorry because it seems it's gone into automatic slideshow. Maybe that's how it was. Um... Um, Don't worry, I can use my own slides here and make uh, the presentation since we I have already I'm, agreed afterwards. I'm going to. Uh, uh, going to it's set as automatic. Slides. You know what? Let me try and remove it, the automatic. Um, I think that's what's going on. Let me try again. And I hope it will not be part of my time. Don't worry. No, it was programmed into, into the PowerPoint presentation to, to just move automatically. Still okay. doing it. I don't know what to do now. 
Okay. Um, let's let me see if I can stop. I can't stop. You've done the introduction. No, not yet. It's gone into automatic. Um, engineer Temitayo, I I suggest that you just let her speak. Okay. While this is moving, she she's going to speak from her own notes, and okay, this good. Um, presentation will yes. be shared to others. Okay. All right. We'll so she'll speak okay, from her you. own. Okay, please, please go ahead, go engineer Rose. Exactly. So I should go ahead. Okay. Yes. So in that introduction, uh, we have um, we standard organization cannot be everywhere in the world. But we have designated our source uh, experts that we have our source to carry out inspection for us on all manufactured products coming outside the country. We have different certification in standard organization. For imported goods, we have what we call SONCA uh, certification. SONCA certification is quality assurance processing we put in place to checkmate the quality of product coming in from that country of origin to the Nigerian market. So SONCA uh, some cap certificate checkmates this activity. And these people that carry out these activities outside the country on our behalf, they go around the world. So, so if, you have, uh, if you have a pro product you well, that you want to there, uh, there is interference here. Can you hear me? Please go on. I think whoever okay. it is has muted. Go on, please. Okay. Okay. So, if you are importing from, let's say, Australia, and there is no um, our inspection agencies in Australia, what we do is we use the nearby country to go and inspect that, country, that product. So we have these inspection agencies that are registered and recognized by standard organization. Outside these people, nobody will give you any certification certificate that, that will be recognized by. So these are Intertech, SGS, Coptechna, CSIC, uh, very, very, very tight CCIC. These are people that carry out inspection of our product on our behalf outside the country, certify the product before it comes into the country. The next, uh, what are the objectives of this standard organization? I just listed them there. I wouldn't want to uh, talk more about them. But you ask, what about products that are being locally produced in Nigeria? What are the kind of certification that we issue? For products coming out of the country, we issue SONCAP. SONCAP certificate is Standard Organization of Nigeria Conformity Assessment Program. That is the meaning of that certificate. And it's solely for product that is coming out of the country to the Nigerian market. Then the product that are being locally produced in Nigeria, we issue them with MANCAP certificate. MANCAP certificate is Mandatory Conformity Assessment Program. Any person that is producing any product in Nigeria, we must check the product, the product quality. And before you produce, we have standards for those products. You have to go and get the standard for the product you are producing. You use that standard and then produce in accordance to the specification of that standard of that product. So it's very, very key. So if you are producing in Nigeria, anywhere you are, it is not a choice. That is why it is called mandatory conformity assessment, we have the right to get into your manufacturing facility anytime to go and check what you're producing to ascertain the quality before we allow you to push that product into the market. And then this process does not take much. Minimum of four inspection a year, we issue you that certificate if you meet up with the minimum specific requirements of that product. So we'll now give you that uh, MANCAP certificate. That MANCAP certificate is only for locally produced products. We don't issue it to uh, um, product coming out of the country. And it has a logo. So once we certify, we issue with that logo. So anything that is circulated in the Nigerian market produced by you must have that logo. If it does not have that logo, it triggers a suspect to us. Then we will now go and check you. And then, as I said, the process is very, very simple. Pick a form. We we'll pick the form from Standard Organization of Nigeria, submit the form. We are going to schedule inspection to you for you. First inspection, second is minimum of four inspection. If you meet all our specification, as I said earlier, you are going to, your product will be certified. Then we have another certification for imported goods. Aside from that sum cap, we call it import permit. Import permit is just for specific uh, category of people, like for manufacturers. We give them import permit because 
a little uh, time takes a little while for some certificate to be to be issued. But for import permit, you can apply today and you can get it today. The reason is to facilitate trade, especially for manufacturers. At times they'll be rolling, running their machines. There will be breakdown in the other machine and they need a spare part immediately. So they will now have to apply to their manufacturer over there or to their supplier to get this particular spare part. So we expect that this spare part will get to them immediately. So what we do is we give them import permit. We have specific uh, people that will issue this import permit. Products that are not going for commercial purposes, we give them import permit. Like if you are building a house for personal use, everything is personal. If there is no commercialization involved in it, we can give you import permit, but we have to assess that particular thing or project you are doing. Like some people are building hotels. Of course, if they are bringing things like AC, fridges, it's not for commercial purpose. They are not selling, they are putting them in their, their facilities. But what we do is we we'll go into the facility, we check the size of the facility vis-a-vis -vis the, product, the product quantity you are bringing in to ascertain it first before we now give you import permit. So this import permit is lo locally issued in Nigeria, in our offices in Lagos and Abuja, and it is done online. You don't need to go to any SOM office. This website is there. You click, you apply, everything is done. You make payment, everything is done online. That is for import permit. And as I said, this is locally issued here in Nigeria, unlike the Sonka. Sonka has processes. When you are trying to open your form M, you have to apply for Sonka. The first that they issue you, first certificate, product certificate, which will enable you to bring it to transfer money to your supply and then it will be able to uh, allow you to open from M. That is the first stage. Then the second stage, when you are ready to bring in your goods, then you will now, the same inspection agency that issued you with product certificate will issue with the sun car certificate. And with that sun car certificate, you will be able to process your PAR, pre-arrival assessment report. These are custom process and documents. And they will need this information before they release your consignment uh, from the port. Then we will have another certification. We call it product type certificate certification in standard organization. For those people that produce locally and they want to go and sell, they have to go and do product time, we'll assess the product because that is why you see some product when they are being shipped out, the, the country of receive, the receiving country rejects the product because they have not made this certification here. We will tell you how to package, what are the contents, all the things we'll assess, we'll analyze, we'll give you certificate analysis of that your product. For that receiving country to now look at it, does it fit our own country and consumption uh, uh, cons consumers in our country? If it's there, would that certificate, all the uh, content will be defined and then they will now accept your product. Then um, I want to jump here and then go to slide 11 to tell you what NAVDA does and what standards organization regulates. We are two sisters organization. We do the same thing. But NAVDA is under Ministry of Health. Standard Organization is more under Ministry of Trade and Investment. But our activities are almost the same. But NAVDA is regulating food and drugs, while we regulate other products, all other products. But there are some products specifically that Standard Organization does not regulate. And these are uh, in slide 11. Food product, which NAVDA does, Standard Organization does not regulate it. So people should know. Because some people will run to some, ah, we need to register. The, meanwhile, it is not some regulated product. So we need to understand that. Then drugs, we now regulate drugs. NAVDA regulates drugs. Medicals other than equipment and machines. For the, uh, what I mean here is, like medical equipment, all those uh, katata, all those bed uh, tools, we don't regulate them. Thermometer, NAVDA handles that. But like hospital equipment and machines, we regulate standard organization regulates them. Because we have to ascertain like hospital beds, we have to ascertain the product itself, the material that is used in producing these beds. We have to ascertain the quality. So we regulate that. That is why we say medicals other than equipment and machines. Because machines, we regulate machines. Chemicals used for raw material, for bonifier manufacturer, NAVDA regulates. Now, you will see that at times, if you are importing products, you will find out that in the port, 
you are bringing in chemicals. You will see NAFTA coming to check that container. ESO is coming to check that container. You will now ask questions. And ah, why these two agencies now coming to check the same product? We are doing different things. They are under Ministry of Health. We are under Ministry of Trade and Investment. And we are starting with the responsibility of checking the quality of that product. So any chemical that SON regulates its final product, we check that product. We check that chemical. For instance, resins. We use resin in producing plastics, plastic buckets, plastic shoes, et cetera. And then we regulate plastic shoes, plastic uh, uh, products. So the components, the raw material, which is the chemical used in producing this, we have to regulate it. So these are the reason why. And then when you see NAFTA, that the same resin is used for producing other products that NAFTA regulates. So NAFTA will want to come and check, does this conform to what we need for this product? So that is where you see we meet NAFTA and so on, on a particular product. You need to understand that so that for importers that are in our midst, don't get confused and don't always resist any inspection by these two agencies. They look out for different things. Then we do not regulate military wares and equipment. Military wares and equipment is a federal government responsibility. They have their experts uh, that, that regulate that. Like if they are importing bullets, you don't expect us to go there because we don't know anything about them. They have their own experts that regulate that. So standard organization does not regulate military wares and equipment. Goods class classify as contraband. Anything contraband already is a substandard product. You are bridging use switch, use AC. Why do I have to go and check all these things? After all, it's even contraband. For it to even find its way to the Nigerian government um, market is already a problem. So we don't regulate that. So if you are bringing contraband, of course, you know, you know how to smuggle them in. So it's, uh, we don't check that. Use products other than automobiles, like all these Okrika. You are bringing used uh, spare parts, auto spare parts. We don't regulate them. We don't even come close to them. But use automobiles, like used cars. You know, we import used cars because of the nature of the economy of the country. The federal government allows used vehicles to come. But they have specific years for them. Any car that is above 15 years, initially, it was five years. If it's, uh, it's above five years, these vehicles are not allowed to come in. But still, the purchasing power of a the average Nigeria cannot meet up with that. So they now increase the number of years to 15 years. So any car above 15 years is not allowed to come to the country. So we have to regulate, we have to check that car or those uh, automobiles before we allow them to come in. So though they are used, but as I said, it's go federal government uh, policy. So they will have to check that. Then like a uh, farm manufacturer, some people that want to import uh, machineries to bring into the Nigerian market to produce. We allow them, but we check them. We allow them to bring in because they are adding value to the Nigerian economy. So basically these are the things SON do not, does not regulate. So we have to, to understand that. Then let me go back to my product, my, my type of registration. I've already emphasized some cap uh, certification, man cap certification, prototype certification, import permit certification. So we have already understood. Then there is another certification we call product registration. Product registration is what different What slide from is product. that? So I can put it on. You have five more minutes, Rose. I've given you four extra minutes. What slide is, are you on now? Is it here? I am in uh, slide uh, 16. Good. All right. Please go. Five slide more minutes, 16. please. Thank oh, you. Okay. Okay. So in that slide 16, I just gave you the differences between product certificate and some kind of certificate. The informations are there because when your manufacturer issues you a certificate, you see product certificate, which is meant to, for, to process from M. You think it's meant to process your part. These are the differences between the two certificates. But I'll show you the picture of the two certificates in the next slide, slide 17. The product certificate is the one at the left. This certificate is used to process your form M. Without form M, you will not be able to transfer money to your manufacturer over there. 
Then Sonka certificate is the one to picture in, in, in your right hand. When you were, your product is ready to come into the country, you have to come with this particular certificate. If we don't see that, that this certificate, it means your product is placed on suspect. So we're not allowed to release, uh, release your product. Then we have product registration. Anything that's already entered into the market, irrespective of the certification you obtain over there, you have to come and register that product with standard organization. We we'll call it product certificate registration. Product certificate registration will have a department for it. The reason for that is for traceability. If anything goes wrong with that, that product, we, have, we should be able to trace that product to you. So you have to do that product registration. Then we have the ISO certification. ISO certification is no mandatory. It's just when you decide you want to go global, you want to have a very wide competition, even as small as you are, you think your business is small and you want to compete with multinational. If you get product uh, uh, ISO certification, you can compete everywhere. It gives you a global recognition. So this uh, ISO certification is system certification. It starts uh, assessing all your activities from your raw material, your staff strength, your environment, what, how you produce your product to the last quality of your product, giving the consumer, both locally and international, international assurance that what is coming out of your, your, your company is of quality. Most uh, business people outside the country, they want to get some business partners in, the, in Nigeria. So the first thing they ask, do you have any company that is ISO certified? Because if they have an assurance of a thought I looking into the quality of their product. So what they will do is we give them the number this of if they want to go into electronics, there are companies that are, sat, are also certified that are in the electronics section. We we'll give them the list of these companies. These are the companies that are also certified. So these people don't need to further any information because standard organization has already given them the assurance. So they have the they have the confidence to now approach uh, those people for for businesses. Then um, for. Uh, I want us to go to uh, uh, slide 33, please, quickly. Slide 33 uh, here, I gave some recommendations. All our activity is to uh, encourage business. And I want to encourage all of us that after this presentation, it is not enough for us to just listen this, to this presentation. It is to encourage us to start something. Even with the smallest amount of money, you can start business. It's because we do not have information about how these businesses, with the smallest amount of business in your, you're operating in your house, you can comfortably compete with multinational. Why? Because if we set up this process, produce the same quality with them. So I recommend every state in Nigeria has what we call TIC. TIC is Technology Incubation Center, where it is government has built it for small uh, entrepreneurs. You just go there, register with them, they will give you a space. In that space, you will now be producing something, your product, then some organization will be coming to check the quality of that product, and they will allow you to push it in the market, you'll be selling, and this TIC will give you this space for three years. So when they find out that you have already settled down, they will now disengage you, go and open your own factory with the money you have been selling your product, then other people will come. So many people do not know that there is this TIC meant for us to now make use of them. So I will encourage all of us, if you are producing small thing in your garage, in your house, go and approach TIC. It is a government-owned facility. They are going to give you all this uh, support. And then standard organization is going to support you. And always put your ears on the agencies. There are some benefits that agencies issue that people don't know. I'm in uh, slide uh, 34. Many, I remember standard organization said, any business entrepreneur that will face the first hundred that will come to standard organization to come and register for ISO, they are going to train them and give them ISO and certify their company for free. And for certification of uh, ISO, it's quite capital intensive, but standard organization offer to hundred entrepreneurs to come and key into and then they will get the certification for free. Surprisingly, nobody came, nobody came. So these are vital information that we have and we throw them anyhow. And I want to encourage us that if you are an entrepreneur, you are starting with even a 50,000 error. Come, the registration with standard organization for small scale uh, entrepreneurs is just 2,500. 
anybody on the street can even give you to come and register. Then they will check the quality of what you are producing. You'll be able to push your product in the market. Before you open your eyes, you, you build a factory and your factory is doing so well. So it is not enough for us to sit down and then we'll just listen and then we we'll throw it away. No, let us start something today. With the small thing we have behind our gar garage, we'll expand it, get to these regulatory agencies, register with them. They are not police, they are to encourage business. That is our mission and vision. Conclusively, I say standard organization sees all of us as partners to facilitate trade. So we are open to suggestions to ensure better collaboration. Apwen, I know some of our, our members have started small business and I try more years producing this hand work. I can tell you how this person is doing today very, very well. They didn't know the certification and I will put attention on to, to that business. We say you will be able to compete with anybody. Like those people producing pure water, clean environment, acceptable environment by standard organization and now that they are competing favorable with even Nestle that is producing water. They are all multinationals, but they are competing favorably. So please try for those people that are importing, try and get some cap. For those with certification, for those people that are producing locally, please try and get manka certification. For those people that are trying to export their product, try and get product type certification. Those that want to get global recognition and compete favorable with any product outside the country, get ISO certification. For us to be able to trace all your product, please, we need you to come and register your product with standard organization. In case of those people that want to save your product, we'll stand in by you and fight for you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very, very, very much. Engineer wow. Rose Madaki, that was a fantastic presentation. Um, we're going to have questions, but before we go into questions, I'd like to apply a poll, which I'd like everybody to um, participate in. So there are three questions. I hope you can see it on your phone or your screen. The first one says, how much new knowledge did you gain about registering with SON, Standards Organization of Nigeria? Is it within uh, zero to twenty-five percent new knowledge or hundred percent new knowledge? The second one says, do you have a product that needs to be registered with Sun? Yes or no? Or you've already registered? So I'd like us to look at uh, at that. And then the third one says, based on the just concluded Sun presentation, how willing are you to get registered to get your business uh, registered? Or your product so please um let us take that poll um Only people have voted, so please go on and just uh, click. And well, while we're also doing that, if you have any questions, you may put them onto the chat. We'll go through the questions in the chat first before we then open the floor so that we cover everything that's already been asked. We have only 47% of people present who have voted, although it's moving up now. Okay, it's now about 50. So please vote. And I'm going to end the poll once we have 75% uh, of people who voted. Engineer Tayo, there's a second poll for NAPDAC. Oh, okay. There should be, yeah. So after this one, then. 
soon end this because it's, it's static. It's only 51%. Okay, it's going up. So I think a few people still want to vote. Give me just 30 seconds and then we'll end this poll and move on to the second poll. Okay, I'm going to end this poll. And you can see the results. I hope you can see the results. Can you see the results? Please let me know if you can see the results. So how much knowledge, much new knowledge did you gain about registering with the standards organization? We can see the results of Nigeria. We, and we have a tie here. 38% uh, say uh, it's between 51% and 75% new knowledge and others 38% say that they've received new knowledge. And then the second question, do you have a product that needs to be registered with standards organizations of Nigeria? And majority at 62% said they do not have. The third question, based on the just concluded uh, presentation by Son, how willing are you to get your product registered? And 85% say that they're very willing, which means that uh, Rose has con uh, convinced us very much. Okay. Uh, now on to the NAFDAC uh, poll. The first question you will see states, how much new knowledge did you gain about registering a product with NAFDAC? The second states says, do you have a product that needs to be registered with NAFDAC? And the third says, based on the just concluded NAFDAC training, how willing are you to get your product registered? So I'm going to launch the poll now. So please vote. Forty-three percent of the participants have voted. Forty-seven percent of participants have voted. I'll just give it thirty more seconds, and then I'll end the poll. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. So, as you can see, um, the majority, 42% of the people say that they've gained between 51% and 75% new knowledge after the presentation from NAFTA. Do you have a product that needs to be registered? 50% is neck, <laughs> a tie. Half of the people who voted said they do have a product, and the other half said they do not have a product. Based on the just concluded training, how many are willing to get it registered? And 92% are willing to get their product registered. So thank you very much for that. 
Now I'm going to go on to the questions and I'll start. First of all, many people want to um, see, uh, want to have Regina's uh, phone number, WhatsApp number, as she said. So we'll need to put that up. So um, engineer uh, Hamid, or if Regina is here, please kindly put up your WhatsApp number so that people can uh, have that. So the first question or co uh, comment is from Chris Okoye, and it says, I'm concerned about standardization of building materials, specifically steel reinforcements. The sizes in the market are not actual. For instance, 16 millimeter rod in the market is actually 14 mm. Who is responsible for the certification of this product? So, Engineer Rose, unmute yourself. Engineer, uh, Engineer, uh, Engineer Regina, unmute yourself. So you will decide now. I love this first question. <laughs> it, it, it has nothing to do with NAVDA. I told you NAVDA is food and drug. This is solely standard organization of Nigeria because it has to do with building materials. Standard organization of Nigeria is the sole responsible agency for steel rods. That is why if there is any collapse building, the first people that approach is Standards Organization of Nigeria. And as, as I said, we have locally pro uh, producers of these steel products in Nigeria. Any product you find in Nigeria, locally produced. The problem with us is we like imported products. And then we should talk to ourselves. Everybody wants to cut costs. Imported products are uh, still uh, iron rods are cheaper. They are cheaper. If you go to buy any iron rod that is produced in Nigeria, because we check them. I was in a committee for iron rod regulations. I know very well. I know I'm in mechanical. We write the standards on iron rods. We review the standards always. All locally manufacturers of uh, manufacturers of these iron rods, they have their their logo on the iron rod. It's, it's embossed inside the iron. Rod. So when you go to buy, check. We ask the buy, uh, the supplier or whoever you are buying in the market. Check one, check piece of one piece of it. Check there is a logo. They put their, uh, they have a, every company has its own specification. They have their own different type of logo. So check from the beginning of the road to the end. It's twelve meters. It is there. So if it is not there, that is number one suspect. Then number two, we ha you have to know where you are buying. I will always encourage people to buy locally produced because we check them here. But others import them from where our, our borders are for us. They bring them from all over other border, borders. Is it the seaports? They will migrate them on that, uh, through the other borders. We have over 1,000 borders. So, and when you, you know, the overhead cost producing over there is cheaper than here. So ours here is a bit expensive. So we run from the cost and then go for the cheaper. And the cheaper, there are always problems. So it is about us, not about the product in the market. Because locally manufactured, it is not possible. I go to inspect the product because I go with the standard. I check, we pick sample. In every inspection, we do what we call on the spot test. We pick the sample from the production line, we test it. And then afterwards, even when you push this product in the market, we still go and pick them. We do market surveillance. We pick them. Without your information, we'll subject them to test. Because at times when you check them in the factory, then they'll now reduce the, the quality and then produce whatever they want. They push them. We still follow them to market. Once we realize that what is in the market was not what was obtainable, we'll seize them and then we'll take action, legal action on them. So it depends on us. What do we want? We should encourage our local manufacturers. We check them. Any manufacturer in Nigeria, Standard Organization of Nigeria, will inspect the minimum of four times a year, each quarter once, each quarter once. So if somebody checks you like that, you think it's easy to just circumvent the, the process? So we'll, we'll talk to ourselves. I think I've addressed Thank that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, the second question goes to both of you. It says, what challenges do you encounter with clients at both NAFTA? and son so mrs regina please put on your camera so you can be sure that it's not rose that gave that representation from now 
The most beautiful one is rose now. If it hangs, we'll tell you to switch it off. But for now, so what challenges do you encounter? So many, so many. People don't want to register their products. People want to cut corners. I've just seen a post here that says, do we have to build a, a, a plant before we, reg we get certification? And I also ask question, do you want to... Okay, it's my fault. Please switch off your camera again. I think the bandwidth is low. We can't hear you. So please switch off your camera again. We've seen your face. So please, because <laughs> they can't hear you anymore, Regina. Oh dear. Regina. Rose, please, could you call Regina? How can I call Let her? her. <laughs> uh, so that, because we can't hear her anymore. I wanted us to see her face. Because it's your own face that we know more of. So. I think I'm going to now, I'm trying to see if there's any more um, questions up. Otherwise, I'm going to open up a floor. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. Uh, there's one more. Um, am I correct to say that foods and food products locally manufactured do not need sun certification? Engineer Rose. Food products that are locally manufactured, do they need sun certification? Yes, they do. I told you, standard organization, sole responsibilities is to elaborate standards. We write standards for food. Ordinary bread that you eat, we have standards for bread. It's food. I told you, write standards for elaborate standards, all the contents, all the components, all the ingredients needed in food. We elaborate standards on there. And most of the issues come from NAVDA. They bring the regulations because they handle safety. So we embed them into the document and then we now issue the document out. And that is why if you are setting a bakery, for instance, bread manufacturing uh, outlet, you have to get that standard and then look at the, the minimal requirements of that and put them in place. That was why she talked about SOPs because you have to put all those uh, processes in place. And that is why in such of manufacturing out, you see now that you see some. So when we go, what we are checking is different from one another. It's checking. We went to a, 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 a bread manufacturing industry with NAVDA. And what we were checking was different from what they were checking. Eventually, we still love that place. Because they did Please not tell us any that particular uh, one. Tell us what Sun would be looking for and what NAFTA could be looking for in that you see, factory. OK, like um, I am mechanical. We have food department. So in inspection like that, food experts go for that inspection. So as I said, there are guidelines and specifications laid down for food or bread manufacturers. So those food experts from some will look at them and then compare with what they have on ground. I'm not a food specialist. I just gave an example. But if it is something like steel, we have analysis, uh, we have chemical analysis components that are required like the zinc content, the carbon content, the magnesium content in the steel bar. So we'll make sure that it meets that minimal, minimal requirement. NAVDA is not there. I'm, I'm just bringing bread where NAVDA is. So NAVDA will now come with their own specifications for checklist for checking that particular bakery. They look at the safety. Like for us, if you like you produce anywhere, we are after the output, the quality of the bread that is coming out there. NAVDA will check the safety. Uh, is the bakery close to toilet? Is there soak away close to that place? Do you, so these are some of the things now that we check. Regina will be able. Regina will be able. Regina wants to speak. Regina, please. Engineer Ross, you cannot speak for Navda in this aspect. SON check all the equipment they use for the installation of um, the bakery itself, but we enforce the quality and safety of the product to the public. If we get to the facility for inspection, we want to believe SON have done their due diligence by ensuring that the equipment that are being used for the production of bread is of standard. But when it comes to production for the public, that's where we come in. 
we must ensure that you are using the right ingredients, you are using the right bath, you everything that has to do with the consumption and distribution of this product to the public. That's what we are after. And that is why when we go there, we sample the product, test send it for laboratory analysis until we are satisfied with the, with the analysis. The result has come out to tell us that the bread does not contain potassium bromate. They are using the right ingredients that is safe for the public. That's when we will now certify the product. And Regina, you may need to switch off, turn off your camera. Maybe we'll be able to hear you then. Um, there's another question. I think this one will be for Rose. What are the recommendations needed to be met by an entrepreneur to get space at the technology incubation center? Rose, you talked about the TIC. Yes. Yeah, um, it's not much at all. Completely not much. All you need to go do is in your states, of operations because it is it, it, this TIC is all over the 36 states. Identify the location of the state. Go and meet the TIC manager. Pick a form. There is a form they issue. I think the form is even free. I don't know whether they have attached price cost to it. Pick the form, fill it, and that is all. That is all. And all you need to do is the TIC. What we did like I, in Owere, what I did for Owere. They have different entrepreneurs. Those are producing uh, lubricants, transition oil, uh, creams, all of them. They are in one big pool, everybody with its own section. So what I did for them was I met the, the center to now come and pick from on behalf of all of them with their different names. So they pay, the organization says he's going to give them a rebate. Otherwise, they say each one of them will pay inspection fee of 1,500 naira only but the center said they are going to pay for them so if the inspection fee or all of them is ten thousand naira the organization can now say well you pay five thousand naira so we'll now deploy the experts in this different division the, the department if you are producing oil we'll send people in food department vegetable they will go and check you are producing honey those people in the food department they will go you are producing the solar panel electrical will go so we we'll go all at once to go and inspect them, get our report. So if there are observations we we'll make out that will improve your system or you are doing something wrong, the standard, the related standard will issue it to you. We'll check. If everything is okay, we'll tell you. If there are different uh, observations, we'll still draw your attention to that observation. Then we'll come and check. So you find out that at the end of the day, you are producing to the minimal requirements of the standard of that product you are producing. And you push your product in the market and you compete favorably with any multinational in the marketplace. So okay. the registration, it does not cost any money. All right. Thank Unless you, uh, you are location want to exploit it. Okay. Yes. Regina, the last question is for you. Hand. Pardon? Okay. I, I didn't see I any. I have just one more question here. I didn't see any raised hand. Okay. Regina, please, could you switch off your camera? Because I think. It may affect, uh, um, you know, yes, thank you. Now, the question is this, uh, it's by Engineer Sinduru. He said, it's, he gives a brief background. In 2016, BOI Bank of Industry required me to get NAFDAQ certificate for my product. But NAFDAQ said that I must build the plant and start production. Why does NAFDAQ require me to build a plant and start production before product certification? So, Engineer, uh, Engineer Regina, please. Yeah, uh, please, I, uh, I would really like to understand. Do you want now that to give you a certificate without having a facility? Is it possible? It all depends, again, what kind of product. If he's talking about pharmaceuticals, is he talking about food? Is he talking about a chemical industry? Is he talking about micro? If it is micro, it is not possible, sir that you will just issue your certificate. We have not taken time to look at your processes. We have not taken time to look at where you are going to produce, what you are going to produce, whether it's aligning to what you are filing to us. We cannot give approval, that's the truth. But if you have a place, it is for us to assess whether what you are going to produce is in line with what our specification have stated. Like I said in my presentation, though the time was too short for me to explain, we have really simplified registration process. 
I don't know what kind of uh, uh, pro product you wanted, that DOI will, will ask you for a plan. Yes, you must have a plan. We cannot give you certification, but uh, I will avail my number to you. I will really am interested in knowing the scenario, and then I will, if I can offer a help, I will help you. But as it is, you, will, you must have a facility. We must come and inspect that facility. And that is why when NAUTAC is issuing you certification, we are not just looking at the product itself. We look at everything that comprises the product, the environment, the equipment, the ingredients, the raw material, the stuff you are going to use, everything that have to do. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Regina. I said Thank I you. cannot raise my hand as, as host. Oh, I sorry. Raise... Okay, so please ask your question, Engineer Kadri. I just want to make a comment. Um, this has been so interesting that it may be worthwhile to synthesize, uh, well, distill where... all the questions, distill all the questions and find a way of getting them to um, engineers Rose and engineers Regina. And we might have another session in future where we can clarify some of things because I, I, I'm, I'm getting clearer with what Regina said about what NAVDAC actually does. And I want to make a comment to what um, Austin asked. There is no way you can have a product if you have not produced it. So if Austin is still there, if you have not produced it, you don't have a product. And to produce the product, you must go through the processes. And those are the processes that NAVDAC needs to know. And that's why they want your SOPs, your stand, standard operating procedures. They want to know who are the handlers. So if you don't have a facility, no matter how small, that's why I, um, when, when Rose mentioned the tech hub, though those places are usually oversubscribed in Lagos. I don't know how successful but So when you, when you have those places, no matter how small, you will have put in place all that you need to do and you'll grow from there, but you must have a facility. You must have a facility because that's what they're looking for. Thank you very much. Uh, before we go into the presentation of certificates, I just want to recognize engineer Yitzunde Holloway, who is the chairman of Women in the Engineering Committee of the FAU. You're welcome. So, Engineer Kadri oh, the FAU. and the WFU, yes. And Vice uh, President of WFU. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. okay. Welcome, so, Engineer Holloway. I think my president is back. I would like her to do the honors yes. of presenting this. Ahead. My presence, are you ready or should I go ahead? It doesn't look like her microphone is on. There's an issue with her microphone. So perhaps the engineer card would like to go ahead. Yes. On, on behalf of the Association of Professional Men Engineers of Nigeria, the President Funlola Odelade, FNSC, and all the members of APWEN, we deeply appreciate this. Should I call it a firework, firecracker presentation by Engineeress Regina Garba? You have given us an excellent pr presentation on product registration with regulatory agencies at a webinar offered by Appwen E, an online learning initiative of the Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria. Thank you so much. Please accept this as our token of appreciation. God bless you. Engineer Regina. I am overwhelmed. I am. I, I am. I am almost emotional, and um, I've been picked by surprise. I'm. I'm. I'm shocked. I thought I'm part of the family. I don't deserve this. Um, I am grateful. I'm humble, and I'm deeply grateful to this great society. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm shocked. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And God bless you. Thank you. We'll be sending it to you in your email. Thank you. Um, our own person, and uh, it might interest you to know that uh, Rose is my baby and she's also my vice chairman on the business committee of APWEN. So I am, I wish someone else could have done this presentation, but I'm doing it. Uh, on behalf of my president, engineer Fumilola Ojela at the FNSC, and the entire members of the Association of Professional Men Engineers of Nigeria, we present this honor code certificate to engineer Rose Madaki FNSC for an excellent presentation on product registration with regulatory agencies, SON, a webinar offered by Upwen E, an online learning initiative of the Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria. Thank you so much, Rose. Uh, we're going to continue to trouble you, as you know, especially on some of the fine lines that we need to derive. We'll be sending this to your email. And I know that because you are part of us, we can always count on you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you very much, Engineer Kadri. I'd now like to call on um, Engineer Remy Amid. To give the we'll respond, of... please. Rose oh. will respond, please. Rose, will... oh, Thank sorry. You. Apologies, Rose. You see, uh, my chairman, you see, that is the problem. Eh? You have put me here as a second person. You, I told you I will say my birthright. I'm always there. Thank you very much, ma. <laughs> uh, you are not when... a guest now. We have to be nice <laughs> our guest, Miss Regina. <laughs> Thank you so much. My desire is, um, you know, the, the, uh, during the uh, Women's International Day, our team was uh, choose to challenge. I want to challenge us, um, Upwen, that let us be seen that we are doing something or we have started something. And because we are already part of all of us, Regina and I are part of Upwen, do not hesitate to always call for our assistance. We will be willing and ready to assist anybody that is um, having challenges on registration of products. I uh, want to use this opportunity for that to say thank you very much for the opportunity because it's an opportunity given for us to share our knowledge, to encourage ourselves. Thank you, uh, this opportunity is not taken by granted by me, for granted by me. Thank you so much. And I look forward to uh, future opportunities again to share things like this in common. Thank you so much. Thank you, my president. Thank you, my chairman. Thank you, Apple. Thank you, everybody. God bless you all. God bless you too. Um, before we all go, I would like to let you know that um, Upwind, the, the Business Entrepreneurship and Social Entrepreneurship Committee of Upwind um, is responsible for this platform. And uh, we had a business, a winning in business present um, seminar so, uh, a few weeks ago. I want to tell you that for those of you who showed interest, we're going to be having a business coaching series. For those of you, I, I sent out mails to you. And if you are here, you see, you need to even be more serious so that you can scale all these things. And we'll be relating with you. It's a one in a million. You, you may not have this opportunity. Engineer Odua Agwaneni is going to be putting us through coaching and um, for those who have registered. And maybe it's not too late. You can send a message to appwendbest at gmail.com or best at appwend.org if you are interested in participating in the business training. Thank you. Okay, Engineer Hamid, for the um, vote of thanks. Okay, um, thank you. On behalf of the president of the Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, 
in person of Engineer Funola Ojelaje. We want to say a big thank you to Engineer Rose Madaki and um, Engineer Regina Garba for honoring um, our calls to make presentations today. We really appreciate you. And we want to say a big thank you to all our elders, all our leaders, all our mentors, and all participants that are present here today for the for this program we hope that um, you'll be able to join us next on our next um, program as well in a short while that should be in the next um, four weeks thank you so much and we wish you a happy weekend thank you very much everybody Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Auntie Fumi. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Fatima. God bless you. You're welcome, Fatima. Hi, thank you for this beautiful presentation. Bye. It's nice to see you. Auntie Margaret is here, too. Saying hi. My baby. Ah. Hey, Margaret Let's see Alaba. your face now. Is, yes, ma. Let's <laughs> see your face, engineer. Yes, Alaba. we are looking for you. know you are coming on soon. You are yes. coming on soon. I wish I could so. show my face. <laughs> Please show your face now. I saw your face. It was looking beautiful <laughs> just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you, ma. Thank you so much. We are looking forward to another powerful session. Okay. Yes, ma. Please stay tuned. We we'll look out Thank for you. every upward notice of Ooh, engineer Patricia. Hey, my engineer. I, 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 I recognized you earlier before you came. Engineer Opinion. Thank you. Because I didn't see my, her that my time. IPP. Without yeah. her, there will be no best come. Without engineer finish. Felicia go back to PhD. There will be no best. Yes, yeah, so we recognize all of you. The Queen Mother has. I herself. think it's before you joined. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. I'm to wait for bye. 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 Bye.